So let's go over how to add effects to our animation in Toon Boom Harmony Premium. So here I have a little frame by frame fire that I animated and it's composed of three different layers. I have my yellow, my orange, and then the soot. So I want the effect that we're going to add to affect both the yellow and the orange layers together. So first I need to shift select both of these layers and group them. And I'm going to use group selection with composite. And I'll show you why I use that. So if I just did regular group selection, over here in our node view, you'll see that it creates two output nodes. So if we go into our group, you can see that it's outputting our layers into two different spots. So in order for this to appear, you have to attach both of these to your composite. So instead of doing that, I prefer to right click and say group selection with composite. And that way our group only has one line connecting it to the composite. I just find it easier to work with. So now that our two layers are grouped, a good practice is also to put a peg onto it. So to access our effects, we can go down to our node library, which is down here next to our timeline. And under our favorites by default, there's already a whole bunch that we can add. We can also search by using the search bar up at the top here. For example, if we type in blur, we'll get all the different blur effects that we can add. Or you can select the node that you want under here. So filter will have a whole bunch of different filter effects that we can use, like color scale, which will change the color of the fire, or a directional blur. So the simplest blur I like to use is this blur box effect. So if we drag that into our node view by clicking and dragging it and then letting go, it'll bring in that effect into our node view. And again, to attach this in between our layers and the composite, we hold down Alt and move our effect in between. So now it looks like it hasn't done anything. And that's for a couple different reasons. First, if I were to click this yellow box to adjust this blur box properties, I can see that my radius is set to zero. So that means it's not gonna do anything. So instead, I'm going to set that to a number of two and then close that to save it. And it's still not doing anything. Well, that's because we're in our OpenGL view. To preview what your effects are doing, you want to go into render view. And now we can see the blur that we have added. Another thing that's useful to know is you can press D to disable a node or A to enable it. Let's do that with another effect. So I'm going to alt drag and remove this blur box. So I'm going to go into my favorites and add transparency. And then I'm going to alt drag it in between here. And if I click on my property, I can see that my transparency is at 50%. If we go back into our timeline, we can see that the transparency effect is down here. So if we want to animate this, we have to click this plus button to adjust the transparency options. And down here, you can see the transparency is set to 50 under our parameters. If you don't see parameters, it's this little button down here underneath the timeline. So you can click that on and off to hide and show parameters. And these parameters you can animate just like our motion keyframes. So I'm going to add a keyframe on frame 1, go to frame 10 and add a keyframe here. And now with my animate button turned on, I can set my transparency on frame 10 to be 0, making it fully opaque. And then on frame 1, I can set the transparency to 100, making it totally transparent. So now if I frame forwards, I can see that my transparency is animating off from 100% to 0%. Another useful effect to know is the cutter node. So a cutter acts just like a mask. So again, I'm going to alt drag it in between here. And in order to use the cutter, we have to create a new layer. So back in OpenGL view, I'm going to create a new layer called mask. So I'm just going to create a really simple shape here to demonstrate. And then back in our node view, I can take this mask layer and drag this string onto my cutter node right here. So now I can see my mask is being used to cut out parts of the flame. So if I frame forwards, I can see that it's not holding, and that's because my mask only lasts for one frame. So just like with most of our other layers, we need to extend that exposure with F5, and our mask will mask out our flame for the entire animation. If I wanted to invert this, like have only what's in the mask be showing and everything else be invisible, I can click the yellow box on my cutter to open its properties, and I can select this inverted checkbox. And that will only show whatever is on the layer mask. So that's how you mask out things. So I'm going to remove all that and add my blur back in. And if I wanted to see how this blur effect looks when it's fully rendered, instead of clicking the play button, which only plays in the OpenGL view, I have to click this render and play button. So I've rendered the scene already, so I'll get a pop-up saying this has been rendered. Uh, do you want to render it again? And of course I do, so I'll click yes. And that will open a pop-up window where we can play our rendered animation. Pretty cool. In the next section, we'll talk about adding a camera and animating it.